So, the last thing that we need to look at is another type of series. And it's a series called a Taylor series. Now, just by show of hands, who in here has looked at this before? Yeah? A couple of people? Fantastic. Okay. Sorry? Yeah, okay, fine. Now, what the idea and what the motivation of a Taylor series is? It is basically taking what I'm going to call a complicated function. Now, what I mean by a complicated function is something like this. Cos of x, or sine of x, or e to the x, or log of x. Uh, yeah, something like that, OK? So these here are complicated functions. Now, when I say complicated, what I really mean here is that they are non-polynomials. Okay, so you're happy with what a polynomial is? Okay, a polynomial is literally what we wrote on that side of the board there. It's like some number, let's say a, plus another number times x, plus another number times x squared, plus another number times x cubed, plus another number times x to the power 4. Do you get the idea? Okay, so it's basically taking powers of x and either increasing or decreasing them, so you're taking terms with powers of x in, and the coefficients, the numbers in front of the x's, are to be determined. Okay, so this is what I mean by a polynomial. And of course, this can carry on going forever and ever and ever. Now, why would we prefer this to one of these functions? So why would we prefer polynomials to one of these functions, do you think? Can anybody think? Why are these easier to deal with than these? I mean, are you happy they are easier to deal with? Like they're easier to find roots, they're easier to differentiate. Um, there's a whole lot more advantages to using these type of functions compared to using these types of functions. Are you happy? Okay. So what Taylor series is all about is it's all about converting these types of functions into these types of functions. In other words, I'll give you a graph like cos x, which is what I've drawn on the, drawn on the board here, and I want you to convert it into something like this. Okay? Now, of course, it's not exact. Like, clearly, these two things are different. Okay? But it's a pretty close approximation. Okay? So we say a Taylor series approximation. It's not exact, but it's close enough for what you need. Okay? Now, clearly, you can't really get one across the whole function. Well, maybe you can if you go off on forever and ever and ever. But the idea is, the more um, terms you use in my Taylor series, the more accurate it becomes. Another thing to take into account is it's always around some point. OK, so a Taylor series is always taken around some point. And the idea is that the more expansion we do, the better the approximation around that point. OK, so just to kind of recap exactly what I've said there. Effectively, a Taylor series is just a way of taking a function which isn't very nice, in other words, a non-polynomial function, and converting it into a polynomial. Okay? And it's approximation because it's not exact, okay? unless you go on forever and ever and ever. So here's what I want you to consider. What graph have I drawn on the board here? Okay, good, cos. So this is the graph cos x. And I'm just going to say this is f of x equals cos x. Happy with that notation? Yeah, f of x equals cos x. OK, and what I want to do is I want to approximate this function into a polynomial around some point. Now, I am going to choose the point x equals 0. OK, so I'm going to choose this point up here. That's the point that I want to centre my approximation around. So I'm going to go around x equals 0. OK? So here's the idea. I want to basically come up with some polynomial which will approximate this. In other words, and I'm going to use a little bit different notation to what I was just using, I'm going to take some constant, then I'm going to add on another constant times x, then I'm going to add on another constant times x squared. OK? In fact, I could carry on going, but I'm just going to consider the first three terms. So let's think. What I'm trying to say is that f of x can be approximated, in other words, cos of x, can be approximated by something that looks like this. 
In other words, can I find a suitable quadratic around this point which would approximate my function? That's the idea. Okay. So let's think about this. Let's think about this first constant first of all. Okay. This constant here should just correspond to a height, shouldn't it? Like it's just going to be some value. So if I just ignore everything else and just look at that constant there, are you happy that will just correspond to some height? So in other words, if I look at this and I say, hmm, what is the value of f of x at x equals 0? What is that equal to? That's equal to 1. Do you see that? OK, so f of x is equal to 1. So in other words, that should also be true with my approximation as well, shouldn't it? So in other words, if I stick some value in here, if I stick 0 into here, that should just be equal to, 1 should just be equal to my constant. Are you happy with that? Like if it's not, if it's equal to like a million, that's a pretty bad approximation, right? I want it to be the same height as this. So let's go for f of 0 equals 1. So in other words, if I draw my line in here, OK, that's my first approximation. So if I don't go as far as that, if I just look at this, if I just look at the first constant term, like one term expansion, it would just be a straight line. OK, and that's not a bad approximation, right? We've done that before when we're looking at differentiation. We can approximate a function by looking at its gradient. OK, so you're happy with that. You're happy with that. That's my first approximation. But of course, I can do better than this. I can do better than this, right? Let's say, for example, I want to look at my first two terms. OK, well, I've already got c0 equals 1. So at the moment, my expansion is looking like this. So c0 is equal to 1 plus c1 times x. And actually, I'll just ignore that term for the time being. I'm just going to do the next term. All right, OK, so let's think about this. Um, are you happy that this is just now a straight line? So instead of just being a flat line, it's now a flat hor it's no, now got some gradient associated with it. OK, so the idea is if I think about my tangent line along this curve, at that point there, what is the value of the gradient at that point there? What's the value of my tangent line? It's zero, right? It's got no slope. It's just flat. So in other words, if I take this and if I differentiate it, so if I take this and differentiate it, so f prime of x uh, equals cos x, uh, sorry, f prime of x is equal to negative sine x, then at f prime of x equals 0, that should just be equal to uh, yeah, 0, isn't it? Yes, good, because negative sine of 0 is equal to 0. Okay. So in other words, the value of my gradient at that point there is equal to 0, which means that in my approximation of my function, the value of my gradient should also be 0. Does that make sense? So in other words, c1 should also be 0. So if I just do this, I take the first approximation of this, so first derivative of my approximation, that should just go to 0. And then I will just be left with c1. OK, do you see that? If I just differentiate this, I get that. In other words, c1 should be the same as what's happening over here. OK, should be the same as what's happening over here. So therefore, I get c1 should be the same as 0. Like if it's not, it's a bad approximation. So I want my first derivative to be the same as my first derivative of my function. Does that make sense? Yeah? So in other words, my approximation is now looking at, in fact, let me keep track of it up here. So f of x is approximately equal to, well, I've got c0 is equal to 1. c1 now I've just established is 0, so I get 0 times x. If I do the next term, so I want now a quadratic approximation, let me get rid of this. OK. So let's think about this. What's the second derivative of this thing? So what's the second derivative of this thing? Uh, is it? Because if I do the second derivative, that goes to 0. That goes to 0 as well, because I'm differentiating again. And this will become? Yeah, because I bring the power down, so it becomes 2. But then I also bring the second power down as well. So 2 times 1 times c2, like that. Does that make sense? Yeah, because if I do the second derivative of this, in fact, let me show it to you. Uh, so c2x squared. If I differentiate it once, it becomes 2c2x. 
If I differentiate it again, it becomes 2 times 1 times C2. Is that okay? So just differentiating this whole thing, that goes to 0, that goes to 0, this becomes 2 times 1 times C2. In other words, 2 lots of C2. Okay? Now have a think about it over here. What's the second derivative of my actual function? In other words, what's the second derivative of cos x? Good. Negative cosine of x. And remember, I'm doing it around 0, around x equals 0. So what's the second derivative? Uh, what's the value of my second derivative when x equals 0? Negative 1. Okay. So in other words, these two things need to be the same. In other words, my second derivative of my approximation needs to be the same as the second derivative of my function at that point. Yeah? If it's not, it's a bad approximation. So let's think about this. Um, all right. So I want this thing to be equal to this thing. So in other words, let me do it in red, negative 1 should be equal to 2 lots of C2. So if I do a bit of rearranging, I find that C2 is negative 1 half. So if I go back up here then, I now know that c2 is negative 1 half, lots of x squared. So literally what I've done here is I've found a quadratic that fits this curve. Okay, so it goes negative 1 half x squared plus 0 times x plus 1. In other words, I get something that looks like that. Are you happy? Okay, so this is my current approximation of my function. And you can see around that point there, like within that certain interval, that's pretty close. It's not too far. How could I improve my approximation, I wonder? What could I do to improve my approximation? Good. I could carry on going with my, with my um, expansion. So the next term would be a C3 x cubed. Okay? Now here, we've done the second derivative. Let's think about the third derivative then. So what's the third derivative of x going to be equal to? Well, are you happy? That term's going to drop to 0. That term's going to drop to 0. That term's going to drop to 0 because the last time was a constant. What would this one become? Two. Good. So just to reiterate that, you're bringing the 3 down for the first derivative, bringing the 2 down for the second derivative, bringing the 1 down again, OK, times c3. Yeah, so that would be the third derivative, right? Let's think about my third derivative over here. In fact, let me draw it. So what's going to be the third derivative? Bearing in mind the second derivative was negative cos. What's going to be the third derivative of x? It's sine, isn't it? Because we were at negative cos. So it's going to be sine x. Okay? And what is the value of my derivative at 0? The value of my third derivative at 0? It's 0, right? Because if you stick 0 in there, it comes out 0. So in other words, I know that this thing, if it's going to be a good approximation, should come out as 0. Does that make sense? Yeah? So in other words, I can find that C3 is just 0. Make sense? Yeah? So in other words, now I've got C3 is equal to 0. OK? And actually, if I carry on going, just for one more term, then we'll finish off, how would we do this? So think about what we've done. If we want to find c4, if we want to find c4, then we're going to be looking at the fourth derivative. Are you happy with that? OK. So the fourth derivative will be what happens when we differentiate this thing four times. OK. This is going to go to 0, clearly, because that dropped out really early. This is going to go to 0. This is going to go to 0. This is going to go to 0. This thing is going to be the only term which remains. In fact, if we differentiate it four times, the 4 will climb down on the first derivative, the 3 will climb down on the second derivative, the 2 will climb down on the third derivative, we'll bring the 1 down for the fourth derivative, and we'll just be left with c4. Okay? In fact, you can check that by differentiating this four times if you wish. Okay? So, now let's come over here. We know that f3 of x was sine x, so what would f4 of x be? What would the fourth derivative of x be? Yeah, good, because we just differentiate that again. So it now becomes cosine of x. And remind me, what is the value of the fourth derivative at x equals 0, around the point which we're approximating? It's equal to 1. So in other words, if this thing is going to be any good, we want this thing to also be equal to 1. Okay? So if we do a bit of rearranging, we find that c4 is equal to, now just think about this, 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. 
can I write that in any better way? 4 factorial. So in other words, this thing is going to be 1 divided by 4 factorial. In fact, I could have written this over 2 factorial as well. Okay? So if we go up here, we're going to have 1 over 4 factorial times by x to the power of 4. Okay? Now don't lose sight of this. Where do these numbers come from? Where do these numbers come from? They came from what happened when we stuck this, that's when we stuck our point which we're approximating, in this case 0, into the fourth derivative of our actual function. Okay? So if I wanted to generalize this, and this will just be the last thing, I promise. If we wanted to generalize a Taylor series approximation, we'd do it like this. Why? Why do we approximate, why do we associate with this with this? Because I'm thinking about what's happening with my derivatives with my actual function. And I'm saying, if I want my approximation to be any good, then I want my derivatives of the relevant um, position in my series to be the same. Like clearly, if this was like a million, then it would be way up here. It would be a rubbish approximation. Okay, I want my line here to be the same as my tangent line here. I want my um, quadratic to be the same as the quadratic there. I want my cubic, if I was going to draw my cubic in, to be approximately the same as that. Okay? I want my quartic, whatever that looks like, to fit this curve as well as I possibly can. Now you notice what I'm literally doing here with every single term that I'm considering is I'm considering a wider, um, kind of a better fit around a wider interval, if that makes sense. So it's like with every term that I consider, like I'm considering more of the function that fits it better. Okay? I'll just finish off on this. I realize I've overrun by four minutes, but uh, we'll finish off on this and we'll meet this again in a few hours' time. Uh, okay, so what we do for this one, we just simply stick the point which we're approximating into our function. Like that's the first like, approximation. It's not great, but it's, it will do. The next one will be f prime of zero times x. Okay, think about how we got that zero. Okay. The next one, well, that negative one came from the second derivative approximated to zero. We divided by two factorial because that's how we approximated the actual constant there. You remember doing that? So we divided by two factorial times x squared. Okay, the next one would be the third derivative approximated at zero divided by, well, three factorial, but we didn't bother considering that because it just dropped out to zero. And then the fourth one would just be f to the power of four of zero divided by four factorial times by x to the power of four. And in fact, we could carry on going like this. So if I wanted to generalize it, this would be the sum from k equals zero of the kth derivative of the function considered at the point which I'm after, divided by k factorial, and then you times that by x to the power of k. That's the term which I'm considering. Okay? So that's kind of the generalized form. That's a very, very quick and brief introduction to Taylor series. But effectively, all I want you to take away, two things. Number one, what you're doing is you're taking a not very nice function and you're approximating it into a polynomial. Okay? The second thing which you're doing is the more terms you consider in your expansion, the more terms you consider in your expansion, the better the approximation of your actual function. So if you consider a million terms, you're going to have a really good approximation for this. Okay? Whereas if you can only consider one, it'll do, but it's not great. All right? Any questions? Good. Fantastic. We'll finish off there. Thank you very much. I will see you at 3 o'clock.